You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Fake, fake, fake. And not just that it's full of fake, fake, fake. It's full of lost, lost, lost. One day, the devil just set a trap somewhere for you. He will use one loss that has been hiding inside of you and derail you. Because you don't know this word. How did Jesus overcome the schemes and the temptation of the devil in the wilderness of prayer? When he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights, it was a simple thing. The word of God. The word of God. If you know you're the son of God, turn this stone to bread. The devil advertised the desires of his flesh. He didn't have desires he had. The Bible said after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. You can't be hungry if you don't desire food. He desired food. But you see, when the guy came and said, Turn the stone to bread, do you know what Jesus said next to him? He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Three solid times the guy passed him. Some of us are still in church today because it's convenient. When I mean convenient, because there are things that are not yet chasing you. When they start seeing you, that's when we know whether the word is in you. The seduction of this age is not yet catching up with you. You are still it's still gymming. It's still in the press of room, gymming. It has not yet come out. When it comes out and faces you, you will fall. He will use food, loss of the flesh. He will use boyfriend. He will use one girlfriend. He will use marriage. He will use one seduction. He will use one attraction. And that's going to be it for you. You see why I don't hang around Christians who don't have appetite for God? Hmm? It's a dangerous thing. No? Oh, you don't know. I can show you from the Bible. That even the God's word instructs that we should not hang around people who are lukewarm. You didn't know the Bible said that there are people you should turn away from. Hello. Ah, let's 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 get there. Second Timothy chapter 3. Hey, these guys need to go and start studying their Bible. You see why when I stay around the person. Uh, uh, okay, Second Timothy chapter 3. Let me read from verse 4. It's a holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power and void and avoid such men as this. It's a man who have a form of godliness, but they have denied his power. What is the power of God? Is the word of God. What makes the cripples walk is the word of God. What did Peter say to the man at the beautiful gate? Silver and gold have I not. He said, but such as I have. Now what was the such? In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Did they sing a special worship song? Did they do a special intercessory prayer? What did he deploy? The word of God. The name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. The guy rose up there and began to walk. The word. So when the Bible talks about denying the power thereof, you think he's denying the power of the Holy Ghost. No, the devil can also fake that one. Oh, you don't know in the faith today, there are many diviners who are saying, Thus is the Lord, and they are not speaking from that source. They are saying that, oh, the Lord said, the Lord said. Yet, they are not speaking from the source. They are speaking from a strange and unverified source. They are speaking from the mouth of Satan. One thing the devil can fake is the gifts of the Spirit. One thing he cannot fake is the fruit of the Spirit. That's why the Bible didn't say by their spirits we shall know them. He said by their fruits we shall know them. And nothing gets you bear this fruit other than the word of God. The Holy Ghost can fuel you with his spirit. 
but fruits are not impacted gifts of the spirit are impacted fruits are cultivated and you cultivate the fruit by staying on the word so this is the point i'm trying to make the word of god is the power unto salvation what saves men is the word of god what builds men is the word of god what converts men is the word of god what develops men is the word of god it is the power of god unto salvation so when you see believers who have a form of godliness but they have denied the word the bible says from such turn because when you begin to spend time with a man or a woman who does not have appetite for the things of God and when I mean the things of God I don't just mean run around church and say you are a zealous Christian I'm talking about a man who has heart for everything that God has heart for his word do you know the Bible says that this is how I know that you love me he said because you keep my commandment which book contains the commandment of God's word of God his word the Bible how you love God is that you are in search of his precepts. One way you show you love God is that you are looking for his commandment because you want to know what God says you should do and you want to keep it. A man cannot claim to love God when he does not know the word of God. Because how can you know God's laws except through his word? A man who loves God wants to do God's will. How can you know God's will without his word? A man who loves God wants to obey God. How can you obey God when you don't know his rules and his rules are in his word? If you start reading your Bible, for instance, get a paper and put by one side a book and a pen and start writing down all the instructions that God gives here and check how many you have kept. Then we should begin to review whether you truly love God. see this book in your hand is not just a book it's not just a document it's not just something that is written i'm going to show you five things about the bible that you don't know five things that the bible reviews that most of you don't know you're ignorant about it and this ignorance is keeping you perpetually defeated Lifting hands, bowing down, is all I've come to do. Casting crown, lifting hands, bowing hands, is all we've come to do. something in 2 Timothy chapter 3 again but this time I will start reading from verse uh, let me even read from that verse 5 and I will run down to somewhere verse 16 very quickly Ah, okay I I wish we can even start from verse (laughs) 1 so you can see a picture of the kind of Christians we have today these are non-believers he's talking about Christians Christians, 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 Christians. But realize this that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of self. Are you seeing? They will love themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers disobedient to parents 
ungrateful, unholy. Not when the word of God is in you. These things will be far from you. He said, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips without self-control, brutal, haters of good. The scripture says, how can a man cleanse his way and keep it pure? He says, by taking heed to the word of God. Do you know God's word is water? It washes you. Every time you stay on God's word, holiness is washed away. Precious net living is washed away. Gossip is washed away. All those lying tongues is washed away. Everything that does not help you to become more like Christ is removed from your life. Look at verse 5. Oh. Okay, verse 4. Treacherous, reckless. You live anyhow. Conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. God's word will reveal his, his, his love to you. God's word will make you fall in love with God. I've never seen anything that can make a person fall in love with God like the word. Not even worship will. Not even prayer will. I say a serious Christian is not known by his worship. Even the devil worships. Davido sings. Jesus sings. Let me tell you, one of the greatest signs of knowing a Christian is not his worship. Anybody can worship. Anybody can sing. One of the greatest signs of knowing a Christian is not prayer. Everybody can pray. People go to native doctors to pray. People go to the shrine to pray. One of the greatest signs for knowing a Christian is his devotion to the Bible, to the Word. That's how you know this person is truly a Christian. People who are not Christians indeed don't go close to this thing. Anybody can fake Christianity by singing song. Anybody can fake his Christianity by praying. You can't fake your Christianity to the extent of the word of God. You want to sit down and know what is contained in this letter. You see, goldness, one of the signs of the last days, one of the signs of perilous time. People will no longer be so much in, in a pursuit of God. The things of God will no longer be the passion and be the desires of people. Passion for God will be gone. I saw people on my internet the other day, YouTube, who were praying somewhere, and I fell in love with these young boys and young girls. You could see typical heart and passion for God. Oh, like those my three young men who were singing at the Enugu the other day. You just see those three, you will know these are these guys, they stay with the word of God. It's not talent first. You will see there is raw passion. No, 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 raw passion. You can hold mic and stand here. We will know whether you are a worded person. Because you just hold mic and be singing. But you, if you see a man who spends time with the word, there's an oil on his head. You always see oil. There's, there's this passion. There's this hunger for God. There's this thing that is crazy for God. You, you can't catch him dried. You know, anytime what you are often passionate about is being talked about, it triggers your passion. If you're passionate about football, and I start talking football, you wake up. If you're passionate about basketball, I start talking about something you, you must contribute. If you don't contribute by talking, you will contribute by looking, by listening. You contribute by there's something that would make me know. Something will make me know. That this is your area. If you are a lover of mathematics and lecture of mathematics at that class, you are smiling. If you don't like mathematics and the teacher who teaches mathematics comes into the class, you will begin to frown. You, you just hate, just thinking that it's now mathematics time makes you feel very angry. That is how we know Christians indeed. People who love the word, each time the word is talked about, they are happy. Because it is something that they have desire and passion for. How we know people whose desire is the area of prophecy is that when I start calling your pants, you are excited. 
I start calling the colors of your underwear and calling your name and your house address. You will be on fire because you want to gather teachers after your own lust. So the excitement travels in the direction of your lust. Me, I'm lost in this one. The word, I'm lost there. So I will sit down on that teachers who can expose and dissect the mysteries contained in these scriptures. That's the one that gives me joy. When I stay in Bible study, I pray in tongues by listening to the word. It's not when you start telling me how there are cars in my desk that I begin to shake. No, just listen to the word. Spirits can enter me. Just listen to the word. I can fall down there anointing. Just listen to the teaching of the word. I can catch revelation. The word, just the word. Oh, you take a man of God is powerful when he calls your name. It's your lust that you're excited about. They just activated your loss. That's what you want. Soon you will find out why it seems like you are in the you are in the middle of nowhere, lost in the middle of nowhere. And some of you who are boasting of unnecessary things, things you have not yet acquired. Sit down and die to the world and the world will begin to look for you. Somebody met me and began to give me her profile. I'm a gospel artist, a gospel minister. I am this, my passion is that, that, that. I said, okay, take my, give us one song. When she sang, I said, yes. These are the ones that will never spend time with the word. They are on the internet copying Messichuo, but Messichuo dies every night. Dies every night. Die every night. They, 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 are, they are on Facebook looking at uh, Adehi or Sinach or looking at Dalin Zetch or Domo. Domo doesn't do music the way you think. He's doing it. You, when you look at Facebook, all you see is somebody singing and you think that it's just by singing that you're a music minister. When you see this guy that came here to minister the other day from Lagos, you see the difference is clear. That one has the word. Even before he began to sing, he started talking. You see the word inside. Fire just erupted everywhere. It's not a nice voice. You don't have nice voice. You don't have the word. You don't have the power. You don't have the anointing. What are you doing? Get out. Go and die. Let the word of God enter you. Look at Victoria Reality. When she picks my people are lying down. Do you know why? The word of God is in her. The word of God is the source of God's anointing. God's anointing is not in heaven. It's in his word. It's in his word. You can be anointed by staying on the word. When you hear this, you know this one stays with the word. It's not just a singer. So if you need to go and edit your Facebook, all those things you will put on Facebook, you edit your dad. Go and wipe it. And stand the word of God. Let God enter you. You will not be advertising yourself. What you carry will advertise you. People will see it clearly. The anointing of God is on this girl. The anointing of God is on this guy. They will see it clearly. You can't set the bush on fire. People don't know. Flames are everywhere. People will see. There's flame. There's fire burning there. I don't they want to be telling the world you're a gospel music. You can't sit down. There are some things people say that irritates me. And God's word is coming. You're just looking like a cinema is being played. No fire in you. Nothing erupting in you. Frank Edwards, minister somewhere I was, held the whole church for more than two hours in a ministration stretch. <laughs> words that were coming out of this guy's mouth. I said, no wonder. No wonder. The guy spent time there. So when he comes out, he begins to bear the mysteries of God through his word. The mysteries of God downloaded in a vessel begins to come out by staying on the word. This is what you don't have time for. This is what God wants to return you back to. You don't have time for it at all. I know you don't have time for it at all. If you have time for it, you'll be on fire. 
If you have time for the word, you'll be ignited. If you have time for the word, your passion will change. If you have time for the word, the things that you that often make you gravitate in the area of lust, loss of the word, loss of the eye, loss of the flesh, the desires of this world, food. The pleasure of this world, it will leave you naturally. You will be in such a fire. You will be in such of the, of, of, of the oil, of oil. You will be in such of God. You will be in such of everything called God. Nothing will move you except His word. Nothing will move you. There's nothing that says, I'm not moved by what people say. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by the problems. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. What moves you? Problems. School fees, house rent, salary, problems. You have built your life on sinking sand. There's only one thing that has a sure foundation. is the word of God. Is the word of God. The Bible said that there were two men that built their house. One built on the sand and the other one built on the rock. He said the wind came. Bah! And blew the one that was on the sand. It collapsed. He said the same wind blew on the one that was in the rock. It stood getting down. It stood getting down. Why? This one was built on the world. This one was built on the world. Peter caught the revelation from heaven. When Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood, Peter, do not reveal this to you. He said, but my father in heaven, he didn't stop there. He now extended the loot and said, upon this rock. What is a rock? Revelation. What is revelation? The word of God. Upon this rock, upon this petra, upon this rock, I will build my church. God wants to build you. He won't build you in a boy state. He will build you on the world. When you stand on the world, you will rule in a boy state. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And my church is not a building made of hands. It's not a building made with blocks. It's a building called you. The church is a person and it's you. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And what will happen? The gates of hell. Do you know every morning you wake up, you stand before the gates of hell? Oh, you don't know. All the arrows attacking you. Where do you take them from? From the gate of hell. So you wake up in the morning. Satan assigns one demon. He said, That guy has woken up. What are you shooting for him today? They look at your list. Depression. The thing hits you, boom, you fall. That's how the whole day you are going like this. Look at the man of destiny. A man who God should be speaking to about China every day. A man God should be planning and strategizing with every day about how to rot exploit in his dispensation and his generation. The following day, what is in, what is in the list for that guy? He says, worry. Oh yeah? Bam! That's how they keep... If your eye in the spirit opens to see how you have been shot mercilessly and how you are busy walking around with unhealed wounds, every part of your body wounds and wounds and wounds. You know why? No what foundation. They just push you small. Yeah. One small push. Yeah. Well, that's why discipleship is what you need now. This season is a season for maturing the saints. So that nothing pushes you again to a point where you are unstable in God. What your dreams have pushed me? No, what is that thing? What is that thing? Is it money? Is it car? Is it house? See, people who sing take the whole world and give me Jesus, there's something they know. They are not just singing a worship song. They are singing a mystery most of you don't know. A man who can tell you, take your word, leave me with Jesus, knows something you don't know. There are some who will leave Jesus because they want the word. There are some of us who will leave the world because we want Jesus. You don't understand what I'm talking about. God's word 
is everything you need in these last days. Without this foundation, Satan is up to victory over your life. Oh, the best thing you can stay on this book of the law. Best thing. And it's so cheap. It's so cheap. Very simple. Very easy to understand. Yet people don't give attention to it. Yet this is where their whole life is. This is God's wisdom. This is God's direction. This is God's compass. This is God's principle. This is God's law. This is God's everything. The inspired word of God. God was in a classroom detecting on the board and men were inspired to write what he was detecting. It wasn't men that wrote the Bible. It was God detecting what they should write. Just like in class, the patient time, the lecturer writes. It's not your word, it's his word. You're only detecting it. So nobody wrote this word on his own terms. The Bible said God inspired these men to write these things. The literature that God published, we don't have time for it. We have time for everything. My time is over already. But I'll close right now. He said, in verse 5 now, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied his power, and avoid such men as this. For among them are those who enter into households and captivate with women, weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And just as James and Jambas opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth. Are you seeing that? They are people in the church. Preach from now to tomorrow. They are hearts are configured in a way that they reject the truth. What is the truth? The truth is not the opposite of a lie. The truth is a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Remember who is talking? God, Jesus, is also the word. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one can come to the Father except through me. So there are people in this dispensation who will be opposed to the truth. They will be opposed to the truth. But let me tell you what will happen to such people. And I pray that you will never be such a person. I say I pray you will never be such a person. Look at what he says. He said, And just as James and Jambas opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth. Men of depraved mind rejected as regards the faith rejected as regards the faith. Rejected as regards the faith. Let me explain for that. Look at what he now says. The consequence of men who oppose the truth and men who are rejected as regards the faith. Look at the consequence in verse 9. He said, but they will not make further progress for their folly will be obvious to all as also that of those that, that of those two came to be. So they are folly. What is folly? They are for their foolishness it will be obvious to all. Why? Well, because the truth is the wisdom of God. The truth is the word of God. The word of God is the wisdom of God. You oppose it, you are setting yourself up for folly. You are setting yourself for lack of progress. The Bible says in verse 9, in case you didn't hear it, it says, But they will not make further progress. Listen, is your life looking like it's not making progress again? I will tell you why. You oppose the word of God. Is your life looking like it's not advancing? I will tell you why. You have opposed the truth of God's word. You have opposed the truth. You have opposed the truth. You are busy with every other thing except this word. See what simplifies your life here the scriptures. What can we do to help you simplify life? I mean, what? Very simple life. God sets exams, give answers to the question before the exam. And still, people fail the exam. Very, very kind God we serve. Yet, do you see why you're not making the desired progress you should make? both in God. You just want to be a baby. Same Christian for 10 years, 5 years, 3 years. Nothing has changed. Because the church you are coming from only 
they corrected the church and put systems that make you feel good but never feel God. So when you're coming through the door of the church, welcome to church. And then you walk, thank you very much. So I shall just tell you, please, you are a king in our midst. I said, like, Oh, this church can care. Do they care for your soul? They can care for how you feel. Do they care for your soul? How I know they care for your soul is are they teaching the incorruptible word of God? Or are they just maintaining you with good services? With good, I celebrate you, or if you want, like we do here, we value you, or I honor you, or I adore you. Ask most people now, what is the basis for their going to church? Oh, the church has a good music, my friend. What is the basis of your going to that church? Oh, the church knows how to care, my friend. And what you call care is that they visit you, you are far. What did the Bible say about men he will give you? Men of God. He said, I will give you pastors after my heart. Jeremiah chapter 17. He said, that will feed you with the word of God. When God wants to bless you, he gives you a man who can teach you the word. <laughs> Ooh, verse 10. Look at what it says here. He wants to do a contrast now. There's a kind of people he was describing from verse 1 to verse 9. Now he wants to show the kind of people you ought to be. In verse 10, see what he said. He said, but you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me at Antioch, and Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. You see, this kind of Christians don't come out of milk. They come out from solid meat. They don't come out of pampering, pampering believers, no. The first set of Christians who are caught up by the wind of perilous time are the ones who we breastfed. They are the ones who came to church to be pampered. We saw no way they will come forever alone. Mm -mm, they can't bring another person. Never. They are of viable seeds. Small demons still oppressing them. No, 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 no. They can't handle those demons. Mm -mm. Small thing, they're checking out. Small persecution. They are tired of God. Ah! Papa, the boy, eh? of how many years? Still burning. I said, Jesus. I said, Jesus. I said, Jesus. What does my generation not know? Papa Kumui just arrived another nation today. I was received at the airport as usual, to go and preach at his age. God, what is it about this man? What built this man? What is the foundation on which this man stand? And my generation served God one month, they are tired. Six months, they are backslidden. One year, they have left the church. Ah! Something is wrong somewhere. The lack of a world based life is destroying this generation. Give them attention, they will smile at you. Remove attention from them and tell them, pay attention to God, they will frown at you. Because it's a generation that is lagging with lust, they want pastors' attention. They want brethren's attention. Do you even know the purpose of God? Do you know the purpose of church? Do you know the purpose of this thing we are doing? God, you think it's an social club, people's club of Nigeria? It will be so shocking that there are some of you. If I call out here now and give you a microphone, recite one scripture. Okay, we are not saying that the word of God is inside you now. We are just saying at least memorize one scripture. You cannot memorize one. One should we try now? You'll be so shocked. Then, what are you practicing? Is no better you a pagan? 
How can you read about how can you read pilots in an offline plane? Or how can you finish reading medicine and not practice medicine? At least, even if you didn't practice medicine because you didn't get the job, at least medicine should be in you. Because you already course. How can you say you're a Christian and not carry what is the life? What makes one a Christian? The word of God is not in you, we can't identify you. The way you talk has not changed from the time you are not believer till now. You claim you're a Christian, nothing has changed. We don't hear kingdom vocabularies in your mouth. When we come around you, you still speak like Beyonce, like Jay Z. You speak like the word. There are no vocabularies of God of the kingdom in your mouth. Then it means you are deceiving yourself. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.